As the country continues to look for solutions to the debilitating energy crisis, ESCOM has now launched one of its first microgrids at the Swatkop Dam area. That's in the Northern Cape. The power utility says the development will be of great benefit to communities that are harder to connect to the main grid. For more on this, let's speak to Professor Hartmut Winkler, who is an energy analyst. A very good evening to you, Professor. Good to speak to you again. Um, let's start with the basics then. What is this microgrid technology? And what can it do that makes it so beneficial to areas that are, um, shall we say, difficult to connect to the main grid? Okay, a, a microgrid is essentially a, a system. It, it's just a, a, a set of uh, electrical connections, uh, which can be anything from uh, within your own home. Uh, so what you have in your home is, say, is almost like a microgrid, or it can be a, 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 an area, a area such as your, your neighborhood. Or it can be, as in this case, a fairly isolated village. So it's just uh, uh, something which that where, where the people try to uh, to be self-sufficient, although they don't have to be. Uh, very often, these grids, uh, these microgrids, are connected, or at least have the possibility of connecting to the larger, broader national Eskom grid. Mm -hmm. And in the north, Northern Cape, excuse me, it's going to be used to feed power to about 39, I think, homes in that area. How exactly will it work? All right, they've got a, a, they've got a, a, a shipping container, and uh, uh, that's uh, they've got they've set up a hundred solar panels, and uh, inside the shipping container they also have uh, I, I saw a photo and I counted there were twenty uh, batteries. Uh, so so essentially what's going to happen is just they they're just going to be uh, trying to draw solar power uh, whenever possible, and uh, in, in a location like uh, the Northern Cape where they are. Uh, as much as it's it's a very uh, dry desert, uh, desert area, uh, they do they're almost guaranteed sunshine uh, every day, and uh, the very few days uh, when they don't get sunshine, uh, well, uh, well, the rest of us have load shedding. They'll have their, <laughs> their own little uh, outages then. Uh, but the idea is that uh, that those panels are going to try and draw as much energy from the sun, and then they have all these batteries which are going to store the, the the energy. And in most cases, that should be all right to see them through the night. Uh, provided they, uh, they they manage the system uh, properly, is so it, 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 it's almost what yeah what some households already have. We, the ones that have decided to go off the grid, they just don't have the option of going back to Eskom if it's cloudy. Ah, <laughs> so what Eskom yeah. is saying in, in announcing this is basically that this speaks to innovation and the way in which it keeps looking for alternatives to connecting as many South Africans to the grid as possible. Is this really all that innovative or can it be found elsewhere? I don't think it's 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 completely innovative. I am aware of a couple of uh, places. I, I know there's a game lodge uh, uh, in, the, in the area of the Kruger Park and so on. So a couple of locations like that have already uh, done something uh, uh, like that. Uh, I think they're talking of of, uh, of setting this up in about a hundred localities. And I think for them, it's it's a case of um, they could either, if they really do want to uh, try and electrify the whole country, which is clearly one of their missions, uh, they could either set up a, a 50 kilometer power line, and that would cost them a lot of money, or they can uh, try uh, try this. In the past, it wasn't uh, it's so uh, viable because the price of solar panels used to be quite high and batteries as well. But uh, for both of those, they've come down now. I think I haven't seen the exact costing of this particular uh, setup that they've uh, just uh, done now. But given that they've, they've got 20 batteries, which look fairly large batteries, plus uh, they've got about 100 solar panels, um, my guess is that would be about a million, possibly two million, if one looks at all the uh, the other connections inside the village and that. Mm. And uh, so that's probably a lot cheaper than setting up a 50 kilometer power line. And uh, I don't know how they exactly they're going to finance. I guess they're just going to expect the community to, to contribute on a, on a monthly basis. And uh, so it's almost like a, a kind of a rent or, or a, a buy as you go a, a kind of scheme. But uh, in principle, the idea is very good. It, 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 it could work uh, elsewhere too. And I think we might have already gotten there a lot earlier if it hadn't been that Eskom has been so successful in the past in connecting rural areas. And That's uh, where they got their international awards uh, in around, two, around about 2000 because they were doing so well uh, going into, into the former homelands and other uh, far out areas and, and managing to get them uh, connected. And does the socio-economic makeup of the particular 
area matter? I ask that because, for example, you said uh, a financing or funding option would be getting the community to contribute. South Africa still has very vast areas of rural land where people are to this day still waiting to be connected in terms of electricity. And I wonder to what extent this may be the go-to solution, perhaps, to make sure that electricity is provided when you consider that a lot of them get a fair amount of, of sunlight, sunshine, and maybe this could work. Am I right? Uh, yes. Well, well certainly, uh, one, now that the thing is there, uh, they're not going to pay anything more. So it's, it's really just having to cover the costs of, of, of buying this stuff. But uh, uh, now, now they are getting free electricity. And, and it will also be an interesting dynamic because uh, given that you've got something like 40 households, uh, you don't want one household to be be like hogging the system and, and overusing it. So it actually relies on people making sure that nobody, if you like, abuses the system and, and, and uh, draws uh, uh, more power than, uh, uh, than they can uh, uh, use at any particular time. And I think that they will want to avoid a situation where they run out of electricity in the course of the night. And there are ways in, in, in which to manage it. In fact, it's something that a lot of South Africans are already doing now. Um, if you need to use your washing machine, do it, do it during the daytime if you've, if you've got, uh, especially if you've got solar. And that's so I, I think they're just going to have to replan it. But for them, ultimately, it's, it's a lot better than, than having nothing at all. I mean, the, until now, I guess they were getting by on generators. And uh, that means uh, diesel costs. Uh, it's also, um, yeah, it, for other reasons, not, not, not the best solution. Professor Hartwood Winkler, good to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time.